Okay, so in this video, what we want to talk about is how to make sure we have our oscilloscopes set properly and our function generator set properly so we can get appropriate reading on the oscilloscope. And then we'll take a look at the oscilloscope and how we can actually break that down to get our um, frequency, our period, and our uh, amplitudes, our voltages, peak to peak, and so on. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we're plugged into our function generator appropriately. This is always the output where it says uh, 50 ohms here. Every function generator is a little bit different, but the ones in my labs, the output's over here. And then we're going to make sure we plug into our channel one, unless it's noted that the channel's bad. Channels here do go bad from time to time. So um, if it's channel one, you're good to go. So what we're gonna do is go and uh, turn this on my function, my function generator already is on, and you notice that I have this covered up, so I don't know what my frequency is. So then to check my frequency, I'm gonna come here, plug my reds together and my blacks together, and I can set those aside sometimes to just make sure that they don't touch. All right, now you can see here I have a signal, but there's a lot going on in here that we need to understand. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna make sure that, um, our lock is uh, not activated here. Your level and your hold off are pretty set. All right, couplings up, source up here. All these buttons are out, okay? Our times per division magnitude is not of, is not out like this, it's it's out. And then um, your AC, DC, you can put the, push the DC in or leave the AC in for most measurements. So again, we wanna make sure we're on channel one. So now this is really nice because we're getting a signal right away. We can actually see the signal. Sometimes if we can't see the signal, the problem is, is our times per division is not set appropriately. And so as you move this in and out, you can see that this will adjust how the sine wave is shown, all right? We also wanna make sure our position button is good. If our position knob here, we always want this as close to center as possible. One of the ways to do that is to hit the ground button and this line should appear. If the line doesn't appear, come over here and hit the auto button. Make sure the normal one's not, the norm button is not pushed in, but the um, auto is pushed in. So then we can use this position knob to make sure that we're in the center and deactivate the ground and we're getting a signal. Then we can adjust our times per division to get a signal that's easy to read. So now we'll just focus on the period at first. So what, I'm, what I like to do is you can use this right here, this position, horizontal position knob to move back and forth. So what I like to do is I like to position the zero degrees, the start of a cycle, right here. Some people like to start at other places. This is where I like to start it. Then I want to count over how many boxes it takes to get one full cycle, one 360 degrees. So this just happens to take two boxes over. Now each box is worth 0.1 milliseconds. So you need to multiply how many boxes it takes to get the 360 degrees by what the boxes are worth. This just happens to be a simple one. It's two boxes times 0.1 milliseconds. And let's run that calculation. And once you've calculated out that, that gives you the cycle. Then you inverse that value to get your frequency. Now we can verify that calculation by pulling off this little blocker I had, and yep, we were right around five kilohertz. Now, let's go ahead and get the amplitude. The amplitude can be a little trickier here. For this, what I like to do is I'm gonna move my position knob up to here. If it's Sometimes if it's in a center, that's easy. I can shift this and get a good reading. But if you want, what you can do is you can shift this so it's right at the bottom here. Then, scoot this position knob over. So then this is one, two, and it looks like me to be about 2.3 boxes. So then you would take 2.3 boxes, 
multiply that by five volts because each box coming up is worth, each box is worth five volts. So this would be five times 2.3. Let's run that calculation. And that's how you get your peak to peak value. From there, you need to convert that peak to peak value into whatever else is required, your peak, RMS, or even your average. All right, so let's run another example here. And so I'll reset this, I'll bring this back down to zero, and I'm gonna adjust my voltage pretty low, and I'm gonna change my value to some unknown value here, all right? And so again, you can see here, my ground is out, so it's not activated, and I'm not getting a signal at all. So when that happens, as long as hold off and level in the right position and your normals in the right position, one of the first things I like to do is adjust the volts per division, making these smaller. And then all of a sudden you can begin to see, hey, I'm getting a signal here, all right? Now this is gonna be a pretty hard one to read, but we'll give it our best try. And then when you see this, what this means is that your um, horizontal boxes are set too high. So we're gonna bring this down and spread this out and there we go look at that we got ourselves a pretty good looking signal now sometimes when you get pretty low like this you'll start to see a little bit of an ugliness in the signal based upon these old function generators that we have but what we're going to do is now we can begin the same exact process to figure out what the period and then calculate out the frequency is and then we'll get the peak to peak voltage so the first thing again i like to do is I'm gonna bring this over, again, making sure I'm, everything's grounded out. I get this centered up nicely with this crosshair here. I'm gonna bring this over, so I'm gonna count. This is 90, 180, 270. Now I'm at 360. And so this takes one, two, three, about three and a half boxes to complete that 360 degree cycle. All right, all right, so that's one, two, three, so three and a half. I'm gonna multiply that by two microseconds. All right, so again, that's three and a half multiplied by two microseconds. So let me show you how you run that on the calculator. And once you've calculated out that, that gives you the cycle. Then you inverse that value to get your frequency. All right, next we need to figure out what our peak to peak voltage is. So again, there's a couple ways to do this. All right, but what I like to do is I, I like to bring my position knob down to where the bottom of the negative peak is sitting on a box. And then I'll bring my position knob over where the peak is right along the vertical crosshair. So here we go, one, two, and this gets a little tricky, but we'll go to the top of this arch right here. So this is one, two, I would say it's about 2.8, all right? So it's about 2.8 boxes going up. If you wanted to say 2.7, you could. So this would be 2.7 multiplied by 0.1 volts. We'll run that calculation and that'll give us our peak to peak voltage. All right, so then, now that we know our frequency, we can come in here, rip this out, and we were pretty close. So this is about uh, 146 kilohertz, and we were pretty close. And again, it, when you get to this exact precise amount, it's sometimes a little bit hard to read. So we'll cover this back up again, and we're, let's go ahead and change it one more time. All right. So now, again, we can't see a signal, but maybe you can pick this up in the video. This is vibrating. And that means that there's a signal there, but everything is wonky and we need to set, we need to change it. So I'll go ahead and start with the voltage. I'll go ahead and start by bringing this down a little bit. All right, it's really hard to see, but I'm getting a very faint signal in there. So you can turn up the intensity, although I don't particularly like to do that, um, but you can. And then we'll take our times per division and we'll start to see what happens when we bring this in and making these boxes worth more or less time. In this case, we're making them worth more time. 
And now look at this, we got ourselves a really, we got a signal that's blinking at us. So we'll come to the ground, bring this up, center our horizontal position, center our uh, vertical position, undo the ground, and we're getting a nice signal. Now it might be a little hard to see here on the screen because it's kind of blinking out and this the, the camera can actually see how fast it is. So I'm gonna see if we can get a frequency that might be a little bit easier to read here. All right, so in this case, because this is such a, uh, because I wanted to get this as clear as possible, I'm gonna go ahead and bring over the position knob here. And I'm starting this off right at that crosshair that I like to use. And I'm gonna count this over. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're at six and a half boxes, all right? And that's again, to get that 360 degree cycle. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, we're at six and a half. Six and a half times one millisecond. So let's go ahead and run that calculation and then we'll verify it. We're at about 150 hertz, all right? So, and that's pretty accurate. That We were really, really close to that with our calculation. Let's figure out the amplitude. So again, what I like to do is I'll bring the bottom of my signal to uh, the bottom of my negative cycle to one of the uh, vertical, one of the horizontal lines and then I'll position it so the peak is right here at the crosshairs and I'll count it up. One, two, three, four, five. I'd say 5.3 is a pretty good number there, about 5.3. So I'm gonna take 5.3 and multiply it by two volts. So again, one, two, three, four, five, 5. 5.3 times two volts. And that gives me my volts peak to peak. All right, well, this is how you can read off of an oscilloscope. Again, if you're in a lab by yourself working on it, make sure you're using this uh, output right here. Make sure these three knobs over here are all turned to the right. Make sure this is your amplitude, all right? This is how you'd set your function generator. And then, you, again, you'd want your both of these up. You want your... Um, auto or normal on depending if you can switch back and forth to see if it's if you're not getting what you want okay in this case i usually start off with auto make sure your hold off and your level are set in okay and uh, your ground is out if you hit that ground remember you need to reset this every time all right that that puts it right there in the middle okay so anyway i hope this video helps you if you ever are struggling with your um, you can use oscilloscope up and running and a good study guide for your final. All right. Thank you very much.